Today in pre-cal, we started learning about polynomials and their domains. So when we're talking about polynomials, um, it's important for you to understand that we're talking about anything that has squares, cubes, anything to that effect, and variables or no variables. Either way is, is okay on that. Um, normal polynomials that do not fall into these two special cases we're about to talk about. So domains are always from negative infinity to positive infinity. That's a that's just a rule. There are two special cases. The first one is when we're talking about rational functions. Okay, when we're talking about rational functions. For example, number one is if I have f of x equals x plus one over x squared minus four. Okay. If I have that, what I'm looking for is that the bottom cannot equal zero. Think about a fraction. If a zero is in the bottom, it's undefined. We can't have that. So what I'm going to do to figure out the domain is to look at where this does equal zero. And where it does equal zero, that is going to be thrown out of my domain. So x squared minus 4 equals zero. I want to set it equal to zero. If it can be factored, I want to do that. This one can. So x plus 2, x minus 2 equals zero. And then when I set each piece equal to zero, I should see that my two solutions are x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. That should be familiar from the past for you. So those are my two problem spots. Remember I said all polynomials have the domain of negative infinity to positive infinity except for special cases. So we're going to start from negative infinity and go to negative 2, from negative 2 to 2, and from 2 to infinity. And that is our domain. Basically, if we thought about a graph, it's breaking at negative 2 and 2 and everywhere else there's something going on. Now that's a very rough drawing. That may not be what that looks like at all, but I just want you to see that at negative two and two there's a hole, which is why there are three pieces of our domain. Let's try another example like that. Example number two, if I had g of x equals x plus one over x squared minus one. Okay, again, I wanna set my denominator equal to zero. So I have x squared minus one equals zero. That can be factored into x plus 1 and x minus 1. And if I got my two solutions, they would be negative 1 and 1. So my domain is from negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to 1, and 1 to infinity. You'll notice on all of these that I'm using parentheses, not brackets, and that I'm going in order from least to greatest. That's very important when you're talking about the domain of rational functions. The next thing we want to look at is part B which is radical functions. When we're talking about radical functions, we're talking about anything with a square root, there can not be a negative under the square root. Because that would give us an imaginary number. I know you've probably talked about those in algebra two, but we're not, we're not talking about those yet. We're still staying in the real numbers. So in this case, that cannot happen. That's what we're looking for. For example, number three, f of x, equals the square root of x squared minus 4. We don't want that to be negative. To figure out where it will be negative, I'm going to start by figuring out where it's 0. And then it should make sense to you that on either side of 0, it's either positive or it's negative. The positive pieces will be in the domain. The negative pieces we will leave out. So if we set this equal to 0, x squared minus 4 equals 0. It can be factored, x minus 2, x plus 2. We've already done this problem once today, so that should be pretty clear to you. Those points are negative 2 and 2. And I realize that those are flipped. I don't want to confuse you there. If I solved, this actually would be 2 and this one would be negative 2. Either way, we want to make a chart now of our domain pieces. We're coming from negative infinity. The first stop is negative 2, then from negative 2 to 2, and 2 to infinity. It's as if we were writing this domain up here, same concept. Now I'm just testing it. If I test a point between negative infinity and negative 2, you could pick any point. It doesn't matter as long as it's in that interval. But I'm just going to choose, for instance, negative 3. If I plug in negative 3 and square it, I get 9 minus 4, which is 5, which is positive. I don't care what the number is. I just want to know, is the answer positive or negative? In that case, it's positive. Let's pick something between negative 2 and 2. For instance, 0. If I put in 0 squared, it's 0. Minus 4 is negative 4. It's a negative. And then 2 and infinity, maybe 3 again. 3 squared is 9. Minus 4 is 5. It's positive. The intervals that are in my domain, then, are the ones that are positive. So it's from negative infinity to negative 2 and 2 to infinity. 
And this time that middle piece has been taken out. The last thing I need to show you on this particular problem is that instead of using parentheses on the inside two pieces, we're probably going to use brackets, and here's why. If I plug in the value negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, minus 4 is 0. We can take the square root of 0. So this piece, this negative 2, can be included. So can this positive 2. And then everything in between negative 2 and 2 cannot be included. So that's the stopping point. Okay, let's move on. Get a new sheet ready here. Okay, we need, well, I want to look at one more example about radicals, something that's a little bit different. And that's example number four. Similar thing, I just want to discuss a little bit about why it's different. h of x equals 3x over the square root of x squared minus 4. Okay, we just did the square root of x squared minus 4, so that should be familiar. We've already done the chart. We've already done all the work that goes with that. This one is different because I'm combining the idea of a radical with the idea of a rational. So now I can't have 0 in the bottom and I can't have a negative square root. If it was just this piece, it'd be the same exact problem as we just did in example 3. Now the only difference is instead of including 2 and negative 2, we're going to use parentheses because we don't want to include those exact numbers. So our domain is from negative infinity to negative 2, parentheses, 2 to infinity. Okay? Part C for today is vertical line test. And you should recall from Algebra 1 and 2 that the vertical line test just means if I draw a vertical line on my graph and it crosses more than one time, then it is not a function. Let's look at a couple of quick examples. If I looked at a graph that looked like this, the answer would be no because I drew my vertical line and it crossed twice. If I did one that looked like this, it would be yes because no matter where I cross, it only crosses once. Okay, that's, that's the easy thing. Hopefully that was a brain break for you. And then part D, the last thing that we learned about today, was zeros. Zeros is a review concept as well. Zeros are just the same exact thing as x-intercepts, or places where it crosses the x-axis. To find those, you're going to make y equal to zero and solve for x. If we're dealing with a fraction, actually, look, I'm going to wait. I'm going to do a radical first. So example number seven, if I have the square root of 10 minus x squared, for example. Get that into view for you. Okay, and I want to know what the zeros are. Some of you are probably saying, well, I thought we could just put it in the calculator. And you're absolutely right, but ones like this, you're not going to get an exact answer is the only problem with that. So if I take this and set it equal to zero, square root of 10 minus x squared, equals 0. Solve for it. I square both sides. That cancels. 10 minus x squared equals 0. 10 equals x squared. Square root of 10 plus or minus equals x. Okay? Then my answer is right there. x equals plus or minus the square root of 10. And that's where my zeros are, both at negative square root of 10 and square root of 10. Last example, 8, that we want to look at is what if h of t equals... 2t minus 3 over t plus 5. And this is a rational, obviously, because it's a fraction. All fractions are rational functions. To see where the zeros are, instead of using the denominator like I did with the domain, denominator, domain, I'm going to use the numerator at the top and set it equal to 0. 2t minus 3 equals 0. The reason I'm doing that is to get 0 out of a fraction, the top always has to be 0. Remember, 0 over any number is just 0. So... If I solve, I'm going to add 3 to both sides, 2t equals 3, divide both sides by 2, and t equals 3 halves. And at 3 halves, it will cross the x-axis. A good way to confirm that might be to look at the calculator, but guys, you're probably not going to get plus or minus the square root of 10 out of a calculator. You're going to get a decimal, and that is going to be points off on any type of assessment. That was it for today's lesson. I know that was a lot, so if you have questions, please let me know, and I'll be happy to answer them.